Um, and it's called self is mestiza. And again, those circular patterns, I was trying to figure out my identity. Like, I, I went through a time, fr uh, time frame where I was trying to figure out my identity, um, where, who I was, where I came from. Um, and so this was also an intuitive way of, of, um, of kind of the circles, the way they kind of mix a little bit, um, is kind of represents that mixed heritage. Do the next one. Okay. Um, oh, okay. So this is around the same time frame as self is undocumented. You can tell I was really pissed. <laughs> <laughs> and so this was also a healing one, just an anger uh, of what's happening. What is the world? What's being? It's being repeated, kind of thing. You know, um, this this racist. Um, uh, is being that uh, happened to my family and what it did to my family over generations uh, is now being repeated to a new group. And so this is what this is what um, it felt. I was painting what I what it felt like to be in the U.S. And so this is why you have this brown woman as the Statue of Liberty because she's supposed to represent all immigrants and all people. And then she's she's encased by barbed wire, barbed wire and she uh, has all these wounds that are like that's piercing her, and she's she's crying because this and her and right in this right in her um, throat, her voice is being um, you know that's kind of representing like her voice is being um, I don't know the word, but <laughs> it, it's it's <clears throat> being muted. Um, and so it's just that whole feeling of what it felt like for me, and, and I'm sure for a lot of people. Okay, next one. This middle one. I don't remember. It's almost we are. It's a almost we are. This middle one. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Can you is it? Can you see it? Pretty okay. Can so, you really see it? Zoom in. I'll zoom in. So this one's this almost we are, and then just yeah, I'll zoom in. It's, this is this is a um, this is a, a mural design, and I, I selected this one because it is about. Um, um, and this one is just a design. I didn't do a mural. I was uh, a finalist for the um, for the um, um, metro in Royal Heights, and but it went to a different artist. But this was all everything that's happening there, and it has, it's happening everywhere about gentrification. And then, um, so you see the background, the backdrop as, you know, the buildings in gray, black and white, and so you know, the people, what matters in these neighborhoods are the people and the, the identity of these neighborhoods. And then, so you can see on the very bottom of the class, it spells out SOMOS. Can you scroll back a little bit? Scroll out. It spells SOMOS. The other side spells in class, we are. But so I wanted to focus on the past, present, and then the other side does this one does the past and the middle is the present and the the last is the future and the future is um, pretty much like organizing and um, our you know um, right here and then the man signing um, a petition for to better you know the neighborhood um, and this is the present and then the mariachis are really they just kind of. Um, and then the woman here, the woman here is kind of like holding the, the, the light of the hope of the future. The, the other far left side is um, the, it represents a little bit of the past of Boyle Heights, the history of Boyle Heights. And then you have some of the, the butterflies that represent immigration, of course, and then this, um, uh, uh, the plants say we are, I don't know if you can read, read them. Um, so that's, that's kind of this design. I thought it was um, 
I thought it was relevant to what we were talking about today, even though this one didn't really manifest on a public um, in a public space. I did design, do this design. And if you look closer to you, have patterns. You have um, patterns marked by trying triangular shape. And I always think of like um, like the native pottery and um, Native American pottery. When I do these, like a lot of these little shapes that kind of like uh, create an image, I think of those symbols that kind of reflect my identity. And it's very intuitive. It's not exact, but it comes from that. And it's inspired by a lot of that, those um, symbols that I see on other art forms. Um, yeah. You can go to the next one. Okay. This one is a mural in a, um, an alternative school in um, Salt Lake City, Utah, called, or, called Horizonte, and it's called um, Pursuit of Dreamers. Um, well, it's, found, it's, a, it's a play on Pursuit of Dreams. <clears throat> and it's a um, high school um, young mom, mom or they have a daycare for, for, for teen moms. Um, adult education, ESL, so it's um, a mix of demographics for students. And each of each of the people in the mural are are the school in one way, shape, or form. Are their students? Um, the, the students that are on the dream catcher in the background. Those are the students that I worked with on this mural, and they um, um, I put them as people that. I asked them what they wanted to be, like what 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 what's the stepping stone? How is what is something a stepping stone? Where do you see yourself? And so they told one person, like from right to left, what, um, the one on the very far wanted to be a doctor. One next to her, she's from Africa. She said she wants to be an African princess. So I painted her as an African princess, um, a counselor, a judge, a boxer, and a nurse. So I painted them. Um, but what on, on the dream catcher and what they wanted to do after after they graduated um, that school, um, and then everyone else, they're some way, shape, or form part of the school. Okay, and then you can go to the next one. Oh wait, but wait before you before you do. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> When I talked about my younger sister um, that dropped out in eighth grade, she went to the school. Um, it was called Forest Man then, and she was um, pregnant with her daughter. And they wanted, they remembered my brother and sister who both went there. My brother is now deceased, but um, he wanted, the principal wanted me to paint my sister in there. And if you scroll in, that's my sister at the time she was going to the school with her, pregnant with um, her, my niece. Which one? Oh. Left. It's left. the one on the pregnant one in the middle, kind of the middle. This one. And they also wanted me, so yeah. So. Yeah. You can go to the next one. The next one. I think that one's last. Oh, sorry. Can I? This one? Oh, no, that, that one's last. Sorry. I guess I did talk about. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> this is part of that series that I talked about before in the other set. And you can scroll in to see some of the images. This one, um, she, her articles were, more, were about identity. Um, and so I have, have images that represent where she's from, and then um, and then also uh, organizing like uh, for ethnic studies. <laughs> so I mean, it's kind of pretty straightforward. This one. And then the other one. So this last one. I kind of feel like I chose this one because it kind of talks about migration on a global level and also the impact of water and 
Um, I actually did um, a piece, the, uh, the woman on the very far left, I did an individual piece. This is a design for, let me just fact check. This is a design for another utility box. There are four different sides. And it's about water. It's called Water's Life. And, um, but I did the first image of the woman. I, I created that after going to Standing Rock last year. Um, and so I created this image and I wanted to, always wanted to do a public art piece with it. Um, and then this opportunity came to design this box. And so I decided, decided to make this piece about, um, about water and using children in, in the, um, piece. And these are also, um, they're all people from Sacramento, except for the, the model for the, for, of the pregnant woman with the globe, um, on the left. That's kind of loosely me because I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want it to look like me. I just, I used myself as a reference. And I'm not pregnant, but that's, yeah. <laughs> so that's this piece. Great. Um, so these are Ruby's work. Um, thank you so much. We have about 10 minutes left. And so if there's um, any other comments or things that people want to look at, um, this is really powerful. Or any questions or things uh, you, you want to um, say, that was really powerful. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just amazing. I, I don't know. Um, I'm a little emotional by seeing and hearing your stories. Um, and the poem, that, and hearing your thoughts about the poem. Um, I'm not sure if um, we want to just, in the last 10 minutes, just kind of leave anything in the space or share anything uh, with each other before we all go. I, I don't want to keep people longer. And so, um, yeah. <laughs> if I could say something, I would. Uh... Um, I was just kind of struck by your painting, Ruby, of the Statue of Liberty. And um, it made me think that what you were talking about, you said something about all. And the Statue of Liberty is supposed to represent, you know, all people and this idea of justice for all and, uh, um, you know, that, that sort of foundational constitutive discourse of the nation state here. Um, but it struck me that um, that actually doesn't mean all, but it originally meant white landowning men. Um, and I, it just it just brought up this tension in between in that's kind of like um, packed into that discourse that all doesn't mean all, and that it it it, it brought up a very very kind of unsettling um, th uh, to to use that in kind of a pun right um, an unsettling kind of idea that I I think I'm going to carry forward that um, how is it that we can l like live with a day-to-day -day with some of these ideas that like we have justice for all when it actually doesn't mean all and how do we sit with that tension and how do we get students to look at that tension and how do we how does it become productive um and what are the kind of like really weird um logics encompassed within that 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 again drive the day today so um i just wanted to share that observation with you thank you very much it was very um again, unsettling in a very productive kind of way, reaction that I had to it. Thank you. I really appreciate that comment, actually, because I think that resonated um, with me as well. And I, you know, I think a lot about, um, you know, so I teach an intro to Asian AM studies course um, at Riverside. It's like 200 students, and I would say like 90% of those students um, identify as being you know, Asian American or being uh, refugees or immigrants. And we have this um, lecture pretty early on where um, we talk about national mythologies, right? And one of them being sort of the Statue of Liberty and sort of what does it mean to think about this whole notion of melting pot, right? And sort of deconstructing that, um, and then, you know, later on the course, um, I find it difficult. It, it's a mythology that is so deeply embodied in people's experiences. Even when I hear students talking about their parents' experiences immigrating and having nothing and then being able to sort of um, build a whole life to give their kids, you know, these opportunities, right? And no matter how many times we're de like, critiquing or deconstructing that, it's, it's um, 
it's an experience of so deeply embodied. So I think Ruby's work and sort of um, thinking about the ways that we can really use um, the creative work of different artists to sort of unpack that too, right? So I just want to say that I did really appreciate um, that comment. It really resonated with me. Yeah, likewise. I mean, I feel um, I'm, I felt really grateful for your narrative of all of the work because um, I feel like I often don't um, don't get that sort of pairing of seeing the work and then hearing the narrative from the actual mm -hmm. artist. But that, something that really struck me was the, the way that you said um, actually this piece could be interpreted in whatever way, right? Because it's the viewer that interprets it, and I felt. I felt that there was so much power in that, right? That I hadn't, uh, that I, I had, uh, I had understood that before. But to have you as the artist tell us that, right? That give us that sort of license and sort of, and, and then just made me think about um, how um, how impactful it can be, right, for someone to to do that act of interpreting, um, and and how it can allow for not just reflection about the piece, but also personal reflection, right? And, and mm -hmm. I think that's what we're all doing right now. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much. That was excellent. Yeah, absolutely great. Mm -hmm. Cindy, Dalita, Sarita. I just want to say that, you know, this I mean, given the theme of impossible subjects, I think that, you know, Ruby's work is just an example of possibility and a possibility that, you know, stays with us as art, as an art form. I mean, again, I'm just thinking about the, the Statue of Liberty piece that, um, you know, that hangs in one of our friend's houses that we have here in Salt Lake or one image of it. And it's, you know, that's here forever. Like that's, that's interrupting this grand narrative, right? It's, it's part of the, um, you know, it, it, it's, it, it interrupts the, the hegemony of the American dream, right? Like you are a counterbalance. You are making new possibilities available for people. Like my students always want to return to, and yet everything is okay. And um, I think, Crystal, I heard you maybe kind of hint that some of your students want to return to, but my parents were able to do it, right? Like there's this kind of force, and I see within my Latino students too, like this wanting to return to this kind of a, this American dream narrative. And I always tell my students, you know, there's this other, there are other dreams. Why must we always return to this one, this one story, right? And I think that Ruby, again, that, that, that opening up of possibility, I think is something that I feel really grateful for. And so thank you. And I'm gonna, that's enough for me. <laughs> I, I like what you just said, Rita. Like, that here's a possibility of, of moving young people away from attaching themselves to that narrative of Nixon building and the American dream. You know, because um, I, I feel like what Ruby's offering here is like these alternatives. And, and I, think it's, I think it's hard for young, I, I think sometimes it's hard for people to get like, it's so easy to say, to give that story of pulling your boots up by, well, I forget how that goes, but you know, like, like this uh, bootstrap kind of mentality. And I think, um, I think it's so nice to see and, and hear your stories behind these pieces too. Thank you, Juan, for bringing that up. The, uh, but, the, but to help people find another, an alternative understanding of their experience in the U.S., that's so important. And so uh, maybe that's the possibility like a pedagogical possibility that, that, that your work offers. So thank you for that, Ruby. You know? Thank you. Um, I, I, I'd like to reflect that back onto everyone here and say that um, um, all your work and your students' stories, your stories, I think those also offer equally what the work that I do offers. I think we all have our own strengths and assets, and I think that we all, all contribute to this change, this uh, wave of change that we're trying to create. Um, and so, and also this format that, you're, that you've invited us all to discuss in, um, Annie, I really appreciate this. Um, so now we can get a better understanding of what 
we all do and um, we all um, all of our in, uh, all of our work reflects the subject so but we, we do our work in different ways and it's all meaningful and important so I just want to thank you all also um, and I did take a lot of uh, the time so that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Well, I just want, oh yeah, um, well, I just wanted to, uh, um, yeah, thank you again, uh, Ruby and, and Annie for organizing and for everyone to, to be part of the discussion and um, maybe something that I'm leaving with as a question, um, and it's an ongoing question, um, but it is about uh, how do we um, how do we create um, spaces of belonging, um, um, but that also are not spaces that are um, uh, spaces of occupation in the sense of colonial occupation, um, and maybe it's just you know it's this tension uh, between. Um, you know, when, when communities become exclusionary. Um, and uh, so, you know, what does that mean? And I'm thinking about, you know, the public artwork that's so important in terms of um, place making, um, but that which is also now becoming a tool of gentrification. Um, and so, just, you know, these really thorny, complicated questions. Um, uh, yeah, and, and maybe another way to think about it is just, um, you know, how do we create um, communities of belonging that are themselves uh, um, acknowledging the realities of, of um, displacements and, you know, the fact that we are, um, uh, in transit, in a sense, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm just leaving all, all of these really rich questions, and I look forward to talking more with you know, with all of you, um, and and uh, and also learning more about um, quest the questions of pedagogy and how people are kind of addressing um, this moment, you know. Um, in, in your classroom, so. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah thank thank you. you so much. You'll be wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Um, this is really wonderful. Um, I feel like this was a pedagogical activity for us to participate in. Uh, we were, I was, I felt like I was learning a lot um, from all of you. Um, and I just, I just want to, um, I'm going to close up now because I, I did promise we would end on time. And so um, this is just to say that this event is part of what we've called Migratory Times um, with the Institute of Impossible Subjects. And so you will all be invited back. You are, there is no requirement, so I know you're all busy, but we will invite you back when the website is live to annotate. So I'll have this conversation transcribed. And then if you want to add layers of resources or or uh, make comments or um, add whatever it is that you want to add to give life to this conversation. Um, we will create a silhouette of a conversation. Um, and so um, and so you'll all be invited back for that. But know that um, we recognize you're busy. And so it's an invitation. And um, I hope that we will continue to stay connected. I know I will uh, stay connected with all of you. But I hope these new connections, uh, we can, um, we can uh, f you know, um, foster it if folks are meeting each other for the first time and want to continue to stay connected, please do.